One of the most difficult things when you're starting jazz is that the chords are flying left and right while you have to keep up and play a solo that fits with those chords and also doesn't sound like you're playing something that's completely random. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can work to develop skills that help you play natural sounding solos that follow the changes. I'm going to start very simple and then expand it gradually. And along the way, I'm going to give you an example of how great jazz players can make amazing lines with these very basic tools because that's possible too. The first problem that you can easily overcome is to stop thinking in scales and start thinking about chord tones. So the notes in each chord. This is to help you learn to play the changes and hear the chord progression. And you can always add the scales back later. They fit around the chord tones anyway. Reducing a song to a bunch of scales is not really helping you play a solo over that chord progression, simply because it's too much information and not clearly connecting you to the chords. Instead, you want to focus on the chord tones or arpeggios of each chord. So often people get caught up in chord scales, but don't forget that if you just play arpeggios, of the chords, it's gonna sound great. In jazz, the basic chord type that makes up the chord progression is a seventh chord. So when I talk about chord tones, then I'm talking about the root, third, fifth, and seventh of each chord. The progression that I'm using in this video is a 2-5-1. A 2-5-1 is a very common progression in jazz that you want to be familiar with because they're all over the place. When I'm talking about a 2-5-1, then I'm referring to scale degrees. So for C major, then you have a chord on each note in the scale. And we use Roman numerals to refer to those. So in C major, a 2 5 one is D minor 7, G7 to C major 7. Since these chords are in the key of C major, then it's really useful to still keep in the back of your mind that the scale is a backdrop for what is happening. Let's start with a really simple way of playing the arpeggios, just using one octave for each arpeggio and then expand it from there. Right now, all the arpeggios have each note once. So for each arpeggio, you have one root, one third, one fifth, and one seventh. You'll see later in the video how to open that up and make it more flexible. But that doesn't mean that you can't already start to make some really good lines with this. And that is, of course, the goal, to play solid, melodic jazz solos. Here you have a basic 2-5-1 lick, just using the chord tones. You want to know the arpeggio so well that you don't end up just running up and down the arpeggio and always start on the root. I think you'll agree that this sounds like an exercise and not like a solo. If you want to use the arpeggios to play melodies, then you need to be free to move around and play them, not be stuck only playing up and down the arpeggio. Simply because that's not really an interesting melody. It is predictable both on each chord and also from one chord to the next. You want to practice making small melodies with an arpeggio to get your technique, your ears and your imagination to open up. So for D minor seven, try to practice making small licks like these. When you're working on composing lines like this, then you're starting to get used to improvising with them. And I think that's something that's very often overlooked. Composing lines is practicing improvisation slowly and therefore very useful. So the more you do that and play those lines, then the more material you'll have to play in your solos. The next thing to do is to start working on playing from one chord to the next and get it to sound like a melody, not like two separate things next to each other. If you start with going from D minor seven to G seven, this is sort of common sense. If you play a note on beat one of the G seven bar that is not in the D minor seven arpeggio, then it's pretty clear that you are now on a new chord. That is easy to hear and you're playing it right when the chord changes. That is the clearest it's going to get. The strongest note for this is probably the third B. So to play the changes and have a solo line that has a natural flow to it, then you can practice playing something on D minor seven that will lead you to that B on G7 and then continue your melody from there. And all of this is exactly the same when you're going from G7 to C major seven. So here you can practice playing towards the third of C major seven, E. It's likely that you've heard about arpeggio positions before and you probably already know this position for D minor seven already. And the G7 can be expanded to this. 
And finally, the C major 7. Now, of course, the notes are still the same four notes. We just have more of them on the fretboard. And for each chord, you will have root, third, fifth, and seventh. But now they're in several places. And this means that you can make lines like this. A great example of a very melodic jazz player that often uses very basic material and also basic chord tones is Wes Montgomery. One line that he uses in different variations in several solos is this line from his solo on four and six. Here he's only playing chord tones and you can find variations of this melody in other places in this solo and also in other West solos. There are some really simple things that you can add to your lines and get better at using that are going to make your solos a lot more interesting. Some of them are used in this example. Here I'm repeating a pattern on the D minor 7, which is a great way to build melodies. If you think about it, then a lot of the melodies that you know are repeated figures that are either moved through the changes like Autumn Leaves, which is a simple melody that is moving down the scale, or simply just repeated like this example, Broadway. One way that you want to work on this with arpeggios is of course to practice patterns like that through the arpeggio. So you can work on four note groups or skipping patterns like this. And then work on using that in your playing by composing lines with them of course. Another thing that you want to work on is rhythm playing melodies that end and start on off beats. In this example, you can see that the G7 line sort of ends on the one and, and then starts again on the three and. And using these off beats, this syncopation, is something that's really important in jazz melodies. The next step is to start adding the scale around the arpeggio, which will give you a lot more options with arpeggios and melodies in general. And there are a few ways that you can do this. I think one of the best ones that is really also just a shortcut to bebop is what I'm discussing in this video, the most important scale exercise in jazz, which is actually also one of the most popular videos on my channel. 